the hypocrisy, I think, of this of the former president. First off, I'm sure he didn't take a commercial flight to go and speak in Glasgow about the climate. But secondly, I'm just, I just, the, all these people are just hypocrites. Every single one of these people, they're all hypocrites. He's a huge hypocrite on this. I don't know of, of really anybody bigger. I mean, this is a this is a guy who is exploiting ex, exploiting loopholes and angering Hawaiian locals because he's building his mansion right on the coastline, and he ex, it went through the loopholes. I'm not saying he paid people off, but I am I gonna I might suggest it to retain the seawall that causes beach erosion near a historic turtle pond. I don't know how familiar you guys are with that story. I mean, yes, I know he's got his big old beach house in Martha's Vineyard. But do you know about his multi-million dollar compound in Oahu? See, he used a third party, his longtime friend Marty Nesbitt, to purchase the property in 2015. Nearly $9 million. And they it was the actually the original house that stood on the property that Obama tore down was the Magnum P.I. house. He bought the Magnum P.I. house, tore the Magnum P.I. house down, and he's building a huge mansion and two guest homes with a huge pool and a security perimeter. It's a three-acre beachfront parcel. That's a lot of stuff to cram in on three acres. And they have this seawall. The state policies that, are, that have been designed to preserve Hawaii's natural coastline, they say that these seawalls, the, like he has, are damaging, uh, proper, the, damaging the coastline. They've done a lot of environmental studies of this, and they said that it contributes to erosion of the beach. And so they they have been tried to trying to get rid of these seawalls, but Obama wants it. And so they exploited a bunch of loopholes to keep that seawall there. It's the Waimanalo community on Oahu. And it's as beautiful bay views. I mean, it's a stunning piece of property. It's a it's a Magnum PI house. And they have a loophole that allows sellers of the property to obtain an easement on things like that seawall for a one time payment. So basically you pay off the zoning officials. And that's what and so as Barack Obama was buying this through his friend from Chicago, Marty Nesbitt, in 2015, they got the sellers to just basically pay off the zoning officials in this with this loophole. And it created a 55-year-old lease. And so they can keep the seawall. And here's what's crazy. Barack Obama is not just keeping that seawall, but he's pursuing an expansion of it. And they said, why are you doing this? Because the beach, everybody else, like you can see in aerial photos, every other property near on on the shore next to him that does not have a seawall they have a beach he on that property that they have that seawall the beach is gone water comes right up to that wall in fact during high tide there is no beach and so and with high tide there there is beach elsewhere in that bay with other properties that do not have that seawall so they're they were actually trying to expand it and it angered the locals. They're like, look, you're, you're ruining this. I thought you were this guy who advocated for environmental sustainability. I mean, they're just tearing it up. And this guy wants to preach to everybody else about the environment? He wants to preach to everybody else about this? This is a guy who's exploited every damn loophole he can to overdevelop property on Hawaii's coastline. It's just crazy. And by the way, it sits next to a historic turtle pond that was previously used to feed Hawaiian chiefs. Now, the reason that Nesbitt became famous is because back in, I guess this was 2018, plans showed that he was tearing down that house. And it was one of the most famous homes on the island. People were livid. So... They, oh, and, and then uh, they also had problems when they found human remains on the property. That's their, that's their, uh, if you're watching the simulcast, 
on the 1st. Now, that says Martha's Vineyard property also on the coast. Now, I thought, yeah, I thought, but I thought with his Martha Vineyard property, remember when he was telling everybody? Remember in one of his speeches where he was like, oh, the oceans are going to rise and it's going to, oh my gosh, the oceans are going to rise. Everybody's going to have to be really careful. Y'all can see I put some in Slack, too. You all can see some of the images of that. Here's the other thing. That, that retaining wall, can I just be honest? It looks like it holds, um, it looks like it. the wall looks dirty, doesn't it? Why would you want that instead of beautiful shoreline? Why would you want that instead of natural beach? Explain that to me. Why would you want that? I cannot for the life of me figure this out. If you were going super bougie and you're tearing up this Hawaiian property, why in the hell would you keep that seawall? Why would you do that? Do you you see it? Can't explain it. What is the purpose of that? It's nasty looking. It doesn't look like it would hold back a tsunami either. If you look at that wall, if there was ever a tsunami, like Jeez. it doesn't look useful. How about this? How about building a, a mansion, a McMansion on a three acre parcel right there on the sea, right there, right on the coastline. I mean, literally feet from the coastline. Right. Ma that doesn't seem like it's sustainable. While you're preaching that the seas are going to rise. <sighs> Insane. It's just crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So this is, this is Mr. Environment, right? Mm -hmm.